Oh, excuse me. I was just reading the editorial page and checking the weather report. No, Benjamin Franklin was right. Some people are weather-wise, most are otherwise. We think of Ben as one of the founding fathers of our country, a statesman, an inventor, a politician, a philosopher, and a scientist. But he was first and foremost a printer, a newspaper man. After learning the art of printing from his brother James, he moved to Philadelphia in 1723 and established the Pennsylvania Gazette, which would become the most successful and influential newspaper in the American colonies. Poor Richard's Almanac, which Franklin published between 1733 and 1758, remains a source of his oft-quoted wit and wisdom. There is no doubt that while Ben Franklin would be amazed at the speed, volume, and blazing color seen in modern printing, he would still recognize the steps in the printing process. The five most common techniques used in modern commercial printing are lithography, gravure, flexography, letterpress, and screen printing. Although there are significant differences between technologies, they each share the same basic operations. Image processing, image transfer, make ready, printing, finishing and drying, and equipment cleaning. Most printing operations begin with a photographic process in which images of letters, graphics, or pictures are reproduced on film as a positive or negative print. These photographic images are then transferred to an image carrier, which is usually a plate, cylinder, or screen. The finished plate or cylinder contains ink receptive areas that will move ink from the ink fountains to the paper. Traditionally, these plates were made of metals like zinc, copper, or aluminum but these metals are being replaced with photopolymer plastics and rubber in a variety of printing applications. During make ready, the plates or cylinders carrying the images are attached to the press and final adjustments are made to assure the proper alignment of the press and paper and to determine the proper ink density. This step is particularly important in multicolor printing because each of the different colors must be properly aligned in order to make the final color appear correct. Make ready is the step in the process where the skill of the pressman is most evident. During printing, ink is applied to the image carrier by a roller or fountain and directly or indirectly transferred to the surface of the paper. While each different type of commercial printing uses a slightly different method to accomplish this, the results are similar. Once printing is complete, the ink must be allowed to dry or cure for varying lengths of time depending on the kind of ink used. Solvent-based inks dry almost instantly, while water-based inks may require increased drying time and specialized drying equipment. Finishing refers to the trimming, collating, folding, and binding that turns pieces of printed paper into the newspapers, books, calendars, and the thousands of other products produced by the commercial printing industry. The final step in the printing process is equipment cleaning. Ink reservoirs, printing rollers, plates, cylinders, and all the associated equipment require cleaning both during and at the end of the press run. The effectiveness of cleaning techniques and chemicals depends largely on the chemistry of the inks used in the process. In Ben Franklin's day, printing was painstakingly slow and labor-intensive compared to the automated high-speed presses of the 1990s. In recent decades, technological innovation has raced ahead at a dizzying speed. Consumer demand for printed material has rapidly expanded and the chemical industry has produced millions of distinct formulas of solvents, dyes, and inks to meet the printer's needs. As spectacular as these advances have been, they are not without problems. During the past decade, a growing body of scientific evidence has confirmed the hazardous nature of many of the chemicals used in printing. And the industry is facing a new challenge. Spurred on by public pressure and new environmental regulations like the Clean Air Act of 1990, the printing industry has responded to the challenge with a combination of two approaches. High technology pollution control systems and an innovative strategy often referred to as pollution prevention. The primary differences between these two approaches is that pollution control methods manage the waste after it is created, while pollution prevention focuses on changing the process so that the waste is never produced. Pollution prevention activities include replacing toxic materials, modifying the production process, reformulating the product, making operational improvements, or 
using in-process closed-loop recycling. Money spent on pollution prevention reduces the costs associated with waste disposal and environmental compliance. Progressive printers around Indiana are applying this new pollution prevention strategy to deal with the problem of hazardous volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, that are common components of inks, dyes, and solvents. For example, Shepard Porman Communications of Indianapolis has replaced the high VOC lacquer coatings used to give its products a glossy finish with an ultraviolet process that achieves the same results but emits no hazardous pollutants. Our strategy as a business is that we're looking for a way to improve not only our product here, but our environment around us. Uh, the impact that we have as one of the largest printers, in, especially in this area, can be felt in the product that we produce, in the environment that our people work in, and the future that we offer to those around us. In years past in the printing industry, one of the um, most prevalent um, chemistries that was being used was isopropyl alcohol. By looking for chemistry that is lower in VOC and less harmful to the people who were actually using it, as well as those who were breathing the air, uh, we were able to eliminate that from our press room. We've changed um, our system a little bit in that uh, we're not making uh, the film negatives and we don't have the silver recovery system being as active as it was last year. With the new computer to plate system, this is one step that's being eliminated. We're not um, working with as much chemistry. That's a two-fold win for us and for the environment. Our continuous monitoring of fountain solutions, uh, the recycling uh, of the solution itself that you saw, how the um, chiller, the, the fountain solution mixing station, mixes the chemistry, chills it, sends it to the press, recovers it from the press, filters it, then adds chemistry to bring it back to the standard and then sends it to the press again, making a continuous loop system. Also, the ink that you saw being pumped from the 55-gallon drums uh, going to the press that's monitored at the uh, ink fountain so that we're not handling it as much. It's environmentally cleaner. There's fewer spills. There's less mixing of chemistry that um, can be dumped or can be lost into the environment in an attempt to make it better for the people that work in this environment. Uh, we're searching for chemistry that makes it easier for us to handle it, easier for the people to work with, and less dangerous for them and their future. Indiana's newspapers have always been concerned about recycling and using recycled materials in the sheet paper they use. Many, like the Muncie Star Press, are also using pollution prevention techniques like replacing toxic oil-based inks with less hazardous inks made from soybeans. The Daily Star Press has a circulation of um, 36,500 and a Sunday circulation of about 42,000. We will use um, for, for newsprint about uh, close to 3,000 tons, 3,000 metric tons of newsprint a year to produce, uh, to produce our newspapers. But we also needed to find the best possible sheet and we looked around for about, uh, about three or four different uh, newsprint sheets and tested them. And finally we found a sheet that um, that gave us all of the qualities that we needed. A white sheet, a very smooth, harder finish. Um, but when an added benefit of finding what we thought was the best sheet, that it also turned out to have a 40% recycled fiber content, which was considerably higher than anything else that we had tested and tried, ranging from virgin newsprint to 6% to about 12% recycled fiber, but none of them, in our opinion, was as good as this sheet. So it was a real added uh, bonus to, to uh, picking what we thought was the best sheet 
but it also turned out to have the highest uh, recycled fiber content. The adage being that it uh, doesn't cost any more and uh, that we were able to get the quality that we needed and at the same time uh, come up with a sheet that was way beyond the state average of recycled fiber. Uh, at other newspapers that I have, have worked, um, we have used soy-based inks. When I first arrived here a few months ago, the only soy-based inks that we were using were our process color inks, which means that of all the color ink we were using, about probably 90% of it was, uh, was soy-based ink, as opposed to our spot color inks, which were oil-based inks. The problem was that the largest amount of ink, which is our black ink, far and away, probably eight times what we use in terms of, uh, as opposed to color inks, um, were still oil-based inks. So we made a conscious decision to switch everything over to soy-based inks. Um, one, it didn't cost us anymore. It was easier for cleanup in the press room on a, on a daily basis. It was, the price was the same, um, so there was no additional cost. And we just felt that if we are going to, to be a, a leader in the community, we needed also to set an example to demonstrate to the community that um, if at times we were going to be critical of others that weren't uh, using recycled products or, or were not doing the right thing environmentally, that we could at least hold our head high with the knowledge that we were doing our part, um, that everything that we were doing in our manufacturing process was as environmentally solid uh, as we could make it under the circumstances. So it wasn't a question of, of commenting editorially on another company in the community because they weren't doing their part. We were able to say that we were and therefore we were in good conscience could, could perhaps be critical of, of some others. A few Indiana printers like Discount Labels of New Albany have applied pollution prevention methods throughout their entire operation and achieved nearly a 100% reduction in the air pollution they emit. In 1995, Discount Labels received the Governor's Award for Excellence in Pollution Prevention in recognition for their efforts. Our management team here at Discount Labels has made a very, very serious commitment to being proactive when it comes to being an environmental friendly company. Ever since the inception of our company, we've used solvent-based inks. And uh, as you know, they're very highly flammable. Uh, they are, uh, the additives are very flammable. It releases a lot of hazardous air pollutants and VOCs into the air. And in 1993, 1994, we evaluated those processes. And we made the commitment that we wanted to make the change to water-based types of inks. The water-based inks obviously do not have the flammability concerns. They don't have the uh, uh, volatile organic compounds at near the levels of solvent-based types of inks. The uh, hazardous air pollutants were still a slight concern, but we've greatly reduced that also. If we were using solvent-based inks at today's production levels, we would be a large quantity generator for hazardous waste. We would be a full-blown Title V permitted uh, source for volatile organic compounds and hazardous air pollutants. As it stands today with water-based inks, we are a conditionally exempt generator. We've had about a 90% reduction in volatile organic compounds, and our hazardous air pollutants have also been very greatly reduced. Our commitment led us to make several uh, innovative changes within our processes. For example, in our plate washing area, where the photopolymer plates are prepared for the printing presses, uh, we used to use a highly toxic chemical that was classified as a carcinogen. Uh, we now use a less toxic chemical, much more user friendly, and the uh, volatile organic compound potential there is greatly reduced. It's a closed loop system. We're able to use the uh, expended material, put it through a distillation process, and the still bottoms are treated as a non-hazardous waste. 
and then uh, we actually reuse the product again so then it has a, uh, a complete cycle of use while taking the solids out and uh, disposing them as non-hazardous waste. One of the challenges we faced when we made the change from solvent-based ink to uh, water-based ink is cleaning the ink fountains. The pigments in water-based ink, if not kept in constant motion, will set up just like concrete. So we created a parts washer that uses a water-based cleanser. It also is a closed-loop system. The waste from this process is treated and the solids are precipitated out. The water is treated and discharged to our sewer and the solids are dried and then landfilled. Our company also saves some money. By generating non-hazardous waste versus hazardous waste, we realized a savings of $22,000 in our first year. Our employees and management team here at Discount Labels have taken a very proactive approach to environmental responsibility. That simply means that we prevent pollution from occurring. Many companies uh, are reactive. I would encourage all printers to do what you can to become more environmentally responsible and create a community atmosphere, an employee atmosphere, and a customer atmosphere that's conducive to making our world a better place to live. Ben Franklin understood that you have to meet problems head on. He responded to the problem of fires in Philadelphia by helping to organize the first volunteer fire department. Franklin knew that when the building was burning and the alarm sounded, you had to act immediately to put the fire out. I also suspect that Ben Franklin recognized that in the long run, fire prevention was an even better alternative than fire protection. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Like fire prevention, pollution prevention is the most cost-effective way of dealing with the problem of environmental pollution in the printing industry. For further information about pollution prevention, contact the Indiana Pollution Prevention and Safe Materials Institute at Purdue University, West Lafayette, Indiana, or the Office of Pollution Prevention and Technical Assistance at the Indiana Department of Environmental Management.